Okay, so picking up uh, where we were last time, <clears throat> we were looking at all the equations for a flat plate boundary layer where the plates aligned with the flow. That means the velocity vectors are parallel to the surface of the plate. We had a set of equations. One set was for laminar flow. Another set of equations for turbulent flow from the leading edge. And then we also had an equation for the uh, MEX flow condition where the flow starts out laminar from the leading edge and then at a certain distance X sub C down, it transits to a turbulent boundary layer. And we worked an example problem and we found many, many things from that example problem. Okay, so that pretty much ended that topic. Now we kind of go to the next phase, which is, here's the flat plate, here's the flow. There's a fan in back of me, floor fan. It's blowing air over the top surface of that plate. Okay, boundary layer builds up. There's um, drag force. What causes the drag force? Um, skin friction. So we have our skin friction, tau sub s. Uh, let's just show that. And we integrated the skin friction over the length of the plate, and that gave us the drag force. Tau sub s times W dx, where W is the plate width. Now, we take that same plate. Now we turn it 90 degrees, like that very thin plate, okay? This is a sharp edge plate. This is a very thin plate. There's a velocity. The velocity vectors now are normal to the flow field. The plate is normal to the flow field, okay? There's gonna create a drag. I let go of this piece of cardboard with the fan back of me. That cardboard hits the wall over there probably. I put this like this with the fan in back of me. Do you think that the plate, the cardboard is going to go as far as that cardboard piece? No, no. It's going to float down and go down. This guy gets blowing back here. Take your hand, <coughs> carefully do this. Maybe you're a passenger in the car. I don't want to see you driving with just one hand on the wheel. So uh, you're the passenger in the car. Roll the window down. Hold your hand out like this. Okay. Now rotate your hand 90 degrees. Whoa, I feel a much bigger force on that now. The drag force on that normal orientation is much greater than the drag force on the tangential orientation. Now this guy here, is there um, any shear stress in the x direction because the drag force is in the x direction? It's not gonna go up or down. No, it doesn't do that. The drag force is in the x direction. Is there any shear stress? No. Why not? Because there's no, there's no plate in the extraction. This is a very thin plate. What creates a drag? If there's no friction, this one, the skin friction, causes the drag force. Here, it's not. It's the pressure force. So over here, we have a high pressure region. And in back of it, we have a low pressure region. And that difference in pressure acting over the plate area creates uh, the drag force on that. Okay, and this, this drag force is due to pressure differences. So take that flat plate. In this situation, align with the flow. In this situation, normal to the flow, and things happen. Is there any difference in pressure here and here? No, we assume the pressure here is the same as the pressure here. The pressure outside the boundary layer we assume to be constant no difference in pressure. There is no pressure drag over here. So here the drag force is caused by 
skin friction. Skin friction. And we can call this uh, friction drag. Over here, this picture, caused by a pressure difference. So drag force by a pressure difference. Okay, so we've got those two guys on here. This is a pressure drag, we just call it a pressure or farm drag. So, Pressure drag, plate normal. Friction drag, plate tangential. Okay. If you want to look at, this is the boundary layer. Okay, I'll just sketch this again. Okay, there's a velocity profile from x from y equals zero up. Don't forget we measure y vertically up from the plate. Over here, when the velocity vector has hit this plate, in the middle stagnation, these velocity vectors end up looking like this. When they hit that point right there, it's called the separation point. The flow separates from the plate. The flow physically separates from the plate. Behind that, there's these swirling eddies. So this is called the wake region. Where there are eddy flows. It's not a turbulent region. It's a turbulent region, but it's not turbulent as the way we define turbulence in a flat plate. It, it's just mixed up region. If you've ever been out and you've seen a stream, or you're fishing and you see a stream, and uh, there's a boulder in the middle of the stream, you'll see the water go around the boulder. And, and behind the boulder, you'll see maybe leaves making little circles, or bugs making little circles. They're in the wake region behind the, behind the rock in the stream. They're in here. The leaves and bugs just do that. They don't go shooting down that way. No, no, no. They go around like that. Okay, so it's a low pressure region. Um, you've got a van with a back window. And if, and if you've had that situation, you wonder, you say, Boy, the back window of my van always gets dirty. I'm always cleaning the back window of my van. I wonder why that happens. Well, all the dust just circulates very slowly when you're driving, and it settles on the back. The front windshield, the dust is blown away by the velocity. But the back of the van is in a wake region. <laughs> That's why they aren't so efficient, uh, streamlined, obviously. So it looks like this behind, behind your... Uh, your van, or a bus, or whatever it is. A tractor, trailer, truck, same thing. There's a region back here. Um, some people try and add things back there to, uh, to make the wake region smaller um, by adding things back there to the back of your car, okay? Uh, now, the real world. Everything's not a flat plate like this. Everything's not a flat plate like this. Typically, obviously, you can tell most, most of the things we look at are a combination of both. So, most things
it, it's some of each, some of each typically. And that's the way most things in the uh, real world are. Um, I'm going to contrast these. One more thing I want to do on here. Um, C sub D is small. I'll, I think I'll put it right here, for right here. C sub D is large. Okay. Um, here was our graph. Laminar flow, mixed flow, turbulent flow. Uh, Reynolds number, uh, C sub D. Uh, typically on the order of, I think what I read from that was on the order of, um, yeah, there it is, figure seven, uh, figure seven, six, oh, typical 004. C sub D. Over here, C sub D is large. Uh, table seven three. We'll go through it in just a minute, but for right now, table seven three, uh, C sub D is on the order of uh, one point two two. <laughs> wow, is it bigger than this? <laughs> it's, it's a lot bigger than this. Point zero zero four. Same size plate, same fluid air. Turn it this way. C sub D, 1.22. Put your hand outside the window of the car. You'll tell the difference. It's big time difference. Hand like this, hand like this. 60 miles an hour, yeah. Um, you can also talk about um, Reynolds number dependence. Um, Reynolds number dependence. Over here, Reynolds number dependence. Is small. Effect of plate roughness. Over here, no effect of plate roughness. So yeah, they're, they're greatly different, obviously, from looking at that. It pretty much, I don't care what the Reynolds number is, it's uh, pretty much in that same ballpark. Over here, Boy, does it, it depend on the Reynolds number. Turbulent flow, it goes down to 0. 0.0015. Yeah, it's big dependence on the Reynolds number. Not so over here. Okay, there's almost no effect on Reynolds number. Why? Because pretty much it always separates at the same point. It always separates there. You don't expect the flow to say, I'll make a U-turn. No, it doesn't do stuff like that. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. It hits the end of that plate and off it goes into the wake region. Okay, so that gets us to, um, besides a flat plate arranged like that, what else could there be in the world of engineering? Well, we know there can be pipes and tubes. They're extremely popular thing for engineers. Tons of them out there. Chemical plant, petroleum refinery, power plant, solar field, you name it. Circular tubes. 
We engineers have tons of those. So, okay, get rid of these guys now and look at circular tubes. Okay, so it's not going to be friction drag totally. It's not going to be form drag totally. It's going to be a combo of both. All right, so this is circular tubes. And we've got the tube that will have a few drawings here. Uh, let's take this one first. We'll call this case A. The uh, flow, this is for a low Reynolds number, stagnation position at the front of it with the velocity vector. And then the velocity vectors go around the backside and recombine on the backside like this. These are the streamlines. Reynolds number on the order of one based on diameter. Really, really, really low Reynolds number approaching what we call creeping flow. Very slow moving flow. Then we go to case B. Stagnation streamline. Um, Flow goes around the cylinder and breaks off from the cylinder at this point. This is a laminar boundary layer. This on this side, the same thing breaks off here. Flow goes around like this. This point's called the separation point. It's the point where du dy at that black dot is zero. At the surface. If you want to blow it up, it looks something like this. This is U. DU dy is zero right there. We're measuring Y outward from the cylinder wall. That's called the separation point. What it implies is that the boundary layer separates from the surface. The boundary layer separates from the surface. Behind that region, here it is. There's a wake region. Turbulent eddies. They call these guys turbulent eddies. Wake region. So that's situation B. Okay, let's take case C. Case C, stagnation streamline. <clears throat> Laminar boundary layer breaks off here. Abbreviated SP separation point. On the front side of the cylinder, it passed the 90 degree mark going forward. Now it's on the front side of the cylinder. The separation point moves forward as the Reynolds number goes up. Wake region gets bigger. The wake region gets bigger. Separation points move forward in front of the 90 degree mark towards the front of the cylinder surface. 
KC. By the way, um, this Reynolds number is roughly somewhere from 20 to 50,000. Uh, this guy is from 50 to 200,000. Fifty thousand, two hundred thousand. Case D. Stagnation streamline. Now the Reynolds number is so large, the boundary layer, which was laminar, transists to turbulent, and the turbulent boundary layer sticks to the walls of the cylinder better. So now the wake region behind the cylinder becomes smaller. This is a laminar boundary layer. This is the turbulent boundary layer. This is now the separation point. So because the flow transisted to turbulence, it sticks to the surface better. Why is that? Well, here's a, uh, a laminar velocity profile. Here's a typical turbulent velocity profile. What's the difference in them? The difference is the turbulent velocity profile, the velocity is bigger near the boundary than the laminar profile. Bigger velocity vectors. The bigger velocity means they have more momentum, m times v. They stick to the surface longer because of that momentum, and so they don't separate until they get around the back side of the cylinder. Eventually they do, but it takes longer for them to do that. So by transisting from laminar to turbulent, you reduce the wake region. So the wake region has been um, reduced. And now, I'm going to put this right here. Okay. This is the reason why the turbulent boundary layer sticks to the surface better. It has more momentum near the surface. Okay, back to here. What are we trying to find? Of course we're trying to find the drag on the surface. That's the object. Flat plate, find the drag force. A cylinder, find the drag force. A sphere, find the drag force. For a sphere, it looks very similar. Of course, it's three-dimensional though. So a cylinder is two-dimensional, so it's easier to show like this. So this is a cylinder, but the same kind of things happen for a sphere in three dimensions. Okay, how do we find the, uh, how do we find the um, drag force? Okay, go back over here again. Here it is. Drag force. Okay. Kinetic energy times an area times C sub D. There it is right there. Got to find C sub D. Similar to someone asked you to find delta P in a pipe, find the pressure drop in the pipe. What do you do? You find the Reynolds number first. Then what do you do? You go to the Moody diagram or a curve fit equation on it, and you find F. F L over D V squared over 2G. Same thing here. What do you do? Get the Reynolds number. Okay. Where do you go? To a graph or an equation, a graph. Where do you put it then? Over there, and that equation there. Same procedure. Whether it's flow inside of a pipe, or flow outside of a pipe. We think the same way. Okay, this is very complicated stuff. This is really complicated stuff. Okay, there are no equations that are in our textbook that talk about C sub D. No. You got a, a plot in the book though. You got a plot in the textbook. It's C sub D versus the Reynolds number. 
let's see which one it is here. Oh, there it is. I think it's um. Let's see. Nope. Okay, here we go. It's kind of hard to read because it's so small. It's figure 716. So figure 716. So I've made a copy from a different textbook. This is from the textbook Potter and Wigert, which was our old textbook, but it's got a real nice big graph. Okay, so there um, is uh, our picture I'll put on the board too, but just so you have one in your hands. And we'll uh, look at let's take we're going to only consider smooth for the, for the, the a picture on the board here. C sub D plotted here, Reynolds number plotted here. It's a log log graph. What's the Moody chart? It's a log log graph. What's the flat plate skin friction? Logarithmic. What's this guy? Log, log, graph. Okay, so, well, let's put down some numbers here. I'm going to start at about 10 to the third. Uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just start here at 10 to the third, roughly. Um, kind of flat for a smooth. Let, let's do the circular cylinder. It's out there by one. So it's uh, pretty much just above one until it gets out to about one and a half times 10 to the uh, fifth. One and a half times 10 to the fifth out to here. So it stays about here, a little bit of variation, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, uh, one and a half times 10 to the fifth. This is a smooth, oh, I'm looking at the smooth, uh, yeah, cylinder, okay. Uh, drops down to about 0.3 at uh, 10 to the sixth. 10 to the sixth is here. So it drops down here on this graph about like this. to about 0.3. And then it recovers and goes back up slowly like that. Okay. That is for a smooth circular cylinder. The graph has a rough cylinder too, but we're not going to worry about that right now, right for right. We'll do that on Monday. All right, now, there's also a sphere on there, but I'm not going to draw that on here right now. Uh, it's very similar. This guy goes up here roughly to 0.75. About like this. Okay, looks like that. On the order of that. It's still hard to read the graph. But that's okay. It's the best we can do. Okay, so 
All right, I'm going to have to go back down here to... Um, Ten squared. Way back. Ten to the first power, one. One, this is ten. This is a hundred. Keep going like that. Okay. One tenth. Okay, that's how it looks on your on your graph. All right, correlate that C sub D graph. with these pictures. Okay, let's start over here. Reynolds number about like one to maybe 10. Okay, looks like that. One to 10. There's how the picture matches with the C sub D graph. Situation B, 20 to five times 10 to the fourth. Ooh. That's right here, B. From here down to there, then it flattens off and goes to there. C. Okay, I had my little erasure there. On the order of 10 to the sixth we had. So C is right in here. The wake region is moving forward now. Okay. Uh, Roughly 100,000, 1 times 10 to the fifth, right there. The last one I had, Reynolds number, greater than 2 times 10 to the fifth. 10 to the fifth, 10 to the sixth, 2 times 10 to the fifth, right there. Uh, Boy, that C sub D dropped dramatically at around 10 to the fifth. Boy, it really dropped down from 1 to 0.3. Oh my gosh, a 70% drop in the drag coefficient. 70% drop, not 5, not 10. 70% drop in the drag coefficient. What caused that? Well, here it is right here. If you're up here, you're sitting up here. Separation point forward of the 90 degree mark on the cylinder. Suddenly, the laminar boundary layer, this was a laminar boundary layer, suddenly it transisted to turbulent and kept attached to the cylinder all the way to the backside now, which cut the wake region down from a humongous area to a very small area. Boom, down goes the drag force because you cut down on the, on the wake region. What's the wake, wake region do? What's well, causing a lot of drag? It's causing a lot of drag. You think a van has good gas mileage? Think again. It's got lousy gas mileage most of the time. Why? Well, I'm, okay, I'm sorry, it's right there. What's the back of the van look like? This. What's the back of a NASCAR look like? This or better than that? Oh, wow, 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 wow. So what do you want to do to get better gas mileage? Reduce that wake region in the back of it. This is the cylinder, so what? The car's very similar, similar geometries, okay? So that's a very interesting point, how that thing drops off like that. Now, that, your diagram also has a sphere. So I'll put the smooth sphere down here. Um, it comes down again, down to around a smooth sphere right at point four. So that was um, one, that was point three, 
So here's point uh, four. So it comes down to where it's relatively flat at point four at about 10 to the fourth. Point four, it's relatively flat. It goes back up to about point five out to where it goes down. Point five, point four. And when it gets to that point right there, you see at two times 10 to the fifth, two times 10 to the fifth, boy, the bottom drops out. Not gradually, I mean the bottom drops out down to essentially point two. To there. When it gets down to there, uh, then it recovers a little bit and goes out like that at point two. There's point three. So this is, this is for a smooth sphere. Okay, so that graph and the graph you have in your textbook is um, for the um, smooth sphere and the smooth, it's also a rough picture on there, but I'm not going to show both of those. We don't need both of those. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, you know the, you know the game. If you've got a smooth cylinder or a smooth sphere, you find the Reynolds number. Once you find the Reynolds number, you go to the graph. You read the graph, and from the graph, you put the C sub D in here, multiplied by the area, rho V squared divided by 2. That's the drag force. But area, okay, where the area is equal to the frontal area for stubby bodies, such as things like spheres, cylinders, cars, trucks, missiles, torpedoes, etc. You look at the front of it. Frontal view, okay. Here's the smooth cylinder. What do I see? I see the diameter times the length. Diameter times the length. If it's a smooth cylinder, for the area, you put the diameter times the length. If it's a smooth sphere, I got a baseball in front of me, what do I see? A circle, pi r squared. You got it. If it's a sphere, a is pi r squared. If it's a car, if I face the car in the front, it's what I see, the area of the front of the car, the area of the front of the bus, the area of the front of the Metrolink train, the area on the front of the truck. It's the frontal area. Motorcycle rider. It's the front of the area, including the guy on the motorcycle. Okay. But you got to, it shifts the gears here now. Or A can be what they call plan farm area. And that's the area as seen from above. Not the front view, the area as seen from above looking down on it. such as wings, aerospace engineering, wings, uh, hydrofoils, etc. Anything with a wing-like structure, the area is defined to be from above looking down called the plant farm area. Okay, so 
let's use all this now to um, work an example. We don't need this anymore, so I'll put this over here. He tells you um, for a sphere, for a sphere, 24 over Reynolds number, C sub D. So for a sphere, this part of the curve right here, C sub D equal 24 over Reynolds number. But that's only for really, really low Reynolds numbers. Don't even use it, it's, use the graph. But I'm just saying that because Oh, we know that guy right there. Yep, laminar flow in a tube. And guess what? F is, does it look similar? Of course it does. I'm trying to show you the similarity between pipe flow and flow outside the pipe, over the pipe. If the Reynolds number is low enough, you have laminar flow and the equation's easy. F is 60. If it's not, okay, now you've got uh, a, smooth, a smooth pipe. Now you've got a rough pipe and a rougher pipe and a really rough pipe. Over here, you've got a smooth cylinder, a smooth sphere, and then you have a rough cylinder and a rough sphere on here. But if the Reynolds number's low enough, you can use that equation over here. If it's less than 2,300, you can use that equation. They're very similar. We engineers think in these veins. The Moody chart is a lot similar to this chart for C sub D. Okay, so now, uh, back over here. Our example. Uh, we're going to look at a sphere attached to a post on the ground. And uh, we have a free stream approaching this, capital U. And the fluid is air, and the uh, temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be in English. We'll work in English one. Um, okay, diameter of the sphere is uh, two feet. The uh, diameter of the post, one foot. And the height of the post is equal to five feet. Length of the post, five feet. Okay. Find the moment at the base of the post. Okay. So. We have, we have to find the force, of course. If you're going to find the force, you've got to find over there, right hand side of the board, find the drag coefficient, got it. Drag coefficient, where do you find it? On the graph, right there, figure 7, 16, got it. Okay, now go through all the calculations. Step number one, I need the Reynolds number, okay. I need, I need the properties, okay. Air, tables in the back of the book, you got it. So get the Reynolds number of the sphere first. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and get the, uh, well, let's, let's put that here. I think I'll put that, I'll put the post here. Okay. Uh, the velocity, let's see what the velocity was. Sixty miles an hour. Eighty-eight feet per second. So, sixty mile an hour wind. 
Okay. All right, back over here, 88. Sphere diameter, two feet, divided by 1.8, 10 to the minus five. Reynolds number, okay, one times 10 to the sixth. Over here, 88 times one, 1 1.8 times 10 to the minus five, half of that guy over there. Five times 10 to the fifth, got it. Go to the graph. All right, the sphere, smooth sphere we assume. One times 10 to the sixth. Right here, smooth sphere. Ooh, it's a case D. The boundary layer started off laminar, it transitioned to turbulent, and it stuck to the sphere longer, and the wake region is smaller. Okay. C sub D, Uh, for the post, okay, post is a cylinder, five times 10 to the fifth, okay, right here, five times 10 to the fifth, we go up here, that's the cylinder, that's right here, that big black dot, we're right there, and if we go across here at that point, we find out it's really point three, if I draw my, have my drawing drawn correctly, it's at point three. <coughs> So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave it like it is right there. Zero point three. So it's just, it's just turned turbulent and dropped down dramatically. C sub D, zero point three. Okay, so get the drag force on the sphere. All right, and we've got, um, for that, that would be uh, C sub D. This is for the, this is for the uh, sphere. That area of the sphere is pi over four D of the sphere to the fourth. Don't forget, for a sphere, the correct area is the frontal area. When you see a baseball, what do you see? I see a circle. What's the area of a circle? Pi D squared divided by four pi d squared, got it. Put all those guys in there, you know U88, you know rho, the density, the um, back of the book. We've got all those values back there. Um, the density is 0 0.00238. Slugs per cubic foot, okay. And that gives you the drag force on the uh, sphere, 5.8 pounds. Okay, do the same thing for the uh, post. Drag is equal to C sub D for the post. This was C sub D for the sphere, area of the sphere. This is C sub D of the post, the area of the post projected. Rho U squared over two. Area of the post is d pi d the circumf or pi not pi d d times l the length of it. What do I see as a projected area of that post? Well, it's right here. Here's my area right here. It's a rectangle. What's the base? The diameter. What's the height? L. Here's a sphere. What do I see? A circle. What's the area? Pi d squared divided by four. It's the frontal area though. Got it, let's see, okay, got it. This was C sub D post. This was C sub D sphere, just so we keep them separate. 
this guy here uh, comes out for the post, the drag force on the post, 13.82 pounds. So now I've got them both. So now the moment, moment is equal to drag force on the sphere times the moment arm for the sphere plus the drag force on the post times the moment arm on the post equals drag force on the sphere right here, 5.8. The distance is five plus the radius. Two feet, radius one foot. Five plus one, six. Times six plus the drag force on the post, 13.82. Times the moment arm for the post, halfway up, five over two, two and a half. Sixty nine point three pound feet. Sixty nine point three pound feet. That's the moment at the base of the post. Now, is everything correct? Yeah, but there's a lot of assumptions built in. Does the velocity really look like that? No, no. Down at the ground, we know what the velocity is. On the ground, zero. I don't know. Does it go up like this real fast? I don't know. I'm going to make the assumption it's the same from top to bottom. That's the first cut to the problem. We can change it later, but that's the first cut. So this, this solution assumes incorrectly, of course, that the velocity from the ground to the top is the same. Yeah, okay, so we know that's true. Uh, is the velocity perfectly like this? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's like this. You know, maybe this is on a hill. And the velocity comes, hits it like that. Okay, I know that's not going to be right because it's not normal to the, to the axis then. So, yeah, there's some things built into there. But essentially, this is the first cut to find the moment at the base of that post with the sphere on top. This could be a water tank in Topeka, Kansas. The thing is, what, 60 feet in diameter? How, how high is it? A hundred feet above the ground? Here comes a tornado or something? Oh, yeah. Are those guys worried about this thing staying in the ground? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. And who designs that? Guess who designs that? We do, thank you very much. Yeah. We'll tell you how big the boat should be or concrete foundation should be for that. That's our job. But somebody's got to go through this calculation to figure out, under very high velocity winds, is it going to stay attached to the ground? Okay, that's all design part, though. Okay, so that's how we use this. Now, let's take another one. Any questions on that guy before I erase it? All right, example. Now, we're going to do this. We're going to take a sphere again. This is going to be a sphere. And this is a um, 30 centimeter diameter smooth sphere. 30 centimeter diameter. Okay, let's do it this way. Yeah, that's all right. 30 centimeter diameter smooth sphere. Okay. Um, this particular problem tells us S is equal to 1.02. Okay. We know from F. first fluids, S is equal to rho divided by rho of um, water in standard conditions, okay? Specific gravity. Some people say SG. This author uses just S for that. The ratio of the density of the fluid divided by the density of water at standard conditions, 60 Fahrenheit, 20 degrees C. Okay, we're going to... Drop that in water. 
drop it in water. Will it, will it sink? Well, yeah, because its density is bigger than water. It's going to go down. Specific gravity is greater than one. It's going to sink. But problem says um, find the terminal velocity. What does that mean? That means the velocity after it reaches a steady speed going down, terminal, the final, terminal, the final, the final velocity. Oh, it'll accelerate when you let it go, but eventually it's going to assume a constant velocity as it drops down, assuming that water stays the same, goes down. Okay, um, all right, so let's put that here then. Um, first thing we'll do, free body diagram of the sphere. We know the sphere has a weight. We know as it's going down, it has a drag force. There it is over there. What does a drag force try and do? Slow it down. Which way does it act? Vertically up. We know there could be, could be a buoyant force. There will be a buoyant force. What does a buoyant force try to do? Push it back to the surface. That's why it's called buoyant force. Push it back to the surface. Which way does a buoyant force act? Vertically up. If it reaches terminal velocity, what's the equation? The sum of those three forces must balance out. Okay. So we have the weight acting down is equal to the drag force plus the buoyant force. Okay, let's do them one at a time. Um, the weight, gamma of the uh, sphere times the volume of the sphere. Volume with the bar over it, so it's not like velocity. The drag force, C sub D, times the correct area, times rho V squared, divided by two. The buoyant force, the buoyant force is gamma of water times the volume. The volume what? The volume being displaced by the sphere. Notice that the buoyant force and the weight look very similar, gamma times the volume, but they're different. For the weight, what's gamma of the sphere? For the buoyant force, what's gamma? Ask yourself, what fluid was pushed out of the way? Answer, water. Okay, gamma water. The sphere pushes that volume of fluid out of the way, creates the buoyant force. What am I solving for? Well, of course, B. That's the object. So now it becomes pretty straightforward. Um, we know what all these guys are. Um, this is, comes out to be uh, S minus 1 gamma of water times uh, the volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, and that's equal to um, C sub d times rho v squared over 2 times pi r squared. This is the frontal area. Don't forget first sphere. The area is the frontal area. It's a circle, pi r squared. Where'd that one come from? Over here. What's gamma of water? S is one for water. What's gamma of the sphere? Capital S times gamma water. So this term here is this term minus that term. Okay, minus sign. Uh, we have to get C sub uh, D. So, um, 
Okay. Let's see. All right. I think you use for C sub D, yeah, 0.5. It's a sphere. Okay. Um, you have to make a guess for C sub D first. You, you can't find C sub D because you can't find the Reynolds number because the Reynolds number has a velocity in it. So you can't find the Reynolds number. You have to guess a C sub D. Let's go back to fluids one. You got flow of water in a pipe, okay. Um, I don't know the Reynolds number, okay. What do I do? Okay, let's say, let's say, well, that's right, this is fine. Do I, Assume it's laminar? No, probably not. Water's rarely laminar. Okay. Um, let's say I have a roughness E over D 0 0.001. Let's just say that. So here's the curve for 0.001. I'll show it like this. This is what your instructor probably told you, Emmy or fluids one. I, I don't know the friction factor. I've got to guess the friction factor, so you know the story. You guess the friction factor where it's fully turbulent, where it's flat. That's your first guess for the friction factor, where it's flat, where it's flat, where it's flat. What if it's a smooth pipe? Down here. What do you guess? I don't know. Take this number over here, 0 0.004. Take this number here, 0 0.002. I'm going to guess between 0 0.004 and 0 0.002. I'm going to guess uh, 0 0.003. Okay. You guess. But if you've got a flat part of the curve, your best guess is to assume the friction factor is going to lie out here. The odds are good it will. Over here. Don't pick it over here where's low Reynolds number. No, do the same thing you did over here. Make your first guess where the curve is flat. Oh, look up here. Cylinder, wow. From a thousand, from a thousand to a hundred thousand. It didn't change. My first guess is gonna be right there. Or maybe I'll guess it out there, but I don't think I will. I'll guess there first. What do I do then? I calculate the velocity, I get the Reynolds number, I go back up here and see if, with my Reynolds number, if it agreed with my guess. If it didn't agree with my guess, I use the new F value, go back, get a new velocity until these guys converge, which they should. Just like you do for pipe friction, same procedure. So I, I take my first guess, it could be 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Uh, you can take one of those two. Uh, so I made my first guess at 0.5. Okay, 0.5. So that would be from here to here. Okay. Okay, put, it, put that guy into there. Solve for V. Get V equal 0 0.40 meters per second. Uh, get the Reynolds number. V D over new. Put that V in for there. We know D. Reynolds number 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. Check C sub D graph. Go over here, uh, 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. Right here. 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. Go up vertically. 
see what I get. Oh, I get 0.5. I'm a good guesser. Okay. At Reynolds number equal 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. C sub D is equal to 0 0.5. Checks with my guess. So the velocity, the terminal speed, I got it right there, 0.4 meters per second. And if you, if you didn't guess right, you repeat it over again until the Fs converge, until the Fs converge. Okay, so good stopping point. We'll stop for today. Uh, and then we'll come back on Monday and we'll finish up drag force on uh, spheres and cylinders.